recording. And I'm going to share my screen with you. Um, there's no PowerPoint. It's literally just going to be a walkthrough um, and things as topics kind of come to me, I'll walk you through them. Um, here we go. All righty. So um, if it looks weird because I'm no longer looking at you, it's because I have two screens here. Um, but everybody should be looking at my Facebook page. So Something to note, um, I'm really going to be focusing on your business pages, not your personal profiles. Um, and uh, just a, an interesting question that I got that I didn't realize um, may have been a little bit confusing is that um, if you've ever built a business page, you'll know that it's not a completely separate profile. It's actually attached to your personal profile, which actually offers you some different benefits there. Um, and once you've built your business page, which if you haven't or if you're um, ever thinking of creating another one for another reason. It's just this create button up here at the top page, and then it's going to walk you through some prompts. Once you've created a page, you can access it in a couple different locations. Um, the first being if you're looking right on your home screen, any page that you have or that you're an admin of, so not necessarily one that you've created, will be showing up under this little tab right here. So that's probably the one I use the most, the easiest or the most accessible, I would say. Um, another place, once you've been to your page enough times, it's going to show up under your shortcuts. I have quite a few shortcuts here, but that's another area you can find it. And then lastly, with this little arrow up in the top right corner. And I'm just going to pull up quickly the chat box just so I have that open. Um, so those are the three places that you can access your business page. Um, and before I actually show you some of the added details and fun things you can do with it. I just want to show you a really, really good example um, of a Keller Williams agent when it comes to compliance, posting, et cetera. I know she's on the call. I already talked to her about it, and we are going to look at Jelena's page. So the reason I'm starting by showing you <laughs> the reason I'm starting by showing you Jelena's page is because um, obviously, with Tanya and Mortgage, we have a few different parameters when it comes to what's expected compliance-wise, um, and I just want to make sure you guys are aware of what is, I should say, I, I will say necessary, um, just in regards to um, making sure there's no reason anybody can report your page, find your page, et cetera. So here I am on Jelena's page. Um, and the first thing I want to touch on, I say there are three main compliance pieces to a Facebook page. The first being your page name. So as you can see, um, Jelena has it. It's her name, comma, Keller Williams, Premier Realty, Lake Natanka. So that's the first thing is you need the full brokerage name in your page name. Um, if you were on a team, if, if, say Jelena had a team name, maybe it was like the Mo team. Um, she could also have that as long as it also had the brokerage name. So it doesn't really matter what you have along with it as long as the brokerage is there. Um, the next thing, compliance piece number two, is the cover photo. And I would say this is the one that I see people, I guess, have uncompliant most often. Um, this one, what you want to point or what I want to point out is right here, she has the brokerage logo once again. Um, and then down here in the bottom right, she has the Equal Housing Opportunity and the National Association of Realtor Logos. Whatever other imagery you want in there, it can be anything. It could be, I love, this is actually, I recognize it from Command Designs. Command Designs has really awesome Facebook cover photo templates, as does Canva. Um, but the imagery itself can be anything you want as long as those logos are located somewhere on the image. And you'll notice these two as well are very, very small. That's totally fine. They don't have to be super prominent as long as they're there. Um, if you have any questions after this on um, different resources you can use to build a cover photo, um, what's needed for that, feel free to shoot me an email. Um, I'm happy to kind of guide you through that. But like I said, Command Designs and also um, Canva have a really, really awesome templates you can use. So the last piece of compliance and also probably what I would say is the most important area to make sure you have thoroughly filled out is this about section of your page. So right when you built a page or even if you've had your page for a while, I recommend going back here and making sure that it's as thorough as possible. You have everything filled out. Um, but for compliance, if you notice, if you scroll down to the bottom under more info and about, um, Jelena writes that she's a licensed realtor in the state of Minnesota. 
that's the last piece of compliance is just having that you are licensed in Minnesota. Um, Jelena even takes it an extra step further, mentions the brokerage. Each office is independently owned and operated. Those are just kind of rules of good rules of thumb to keep uh, in mind when it comes to any sort of marketing materials. Um, it's just that you're licensed in Minnesota, your brokerage, and each office is independently owned and operated. Um, as you can see, Jelena also has um, the location of the office. She has her phone number. She has her email, her website on there, lots of good information. So that about section, um, when I go into Tanya's page, I'll show you from an editing perspective what that looks like and just a few other things you can do with that. But I just want to make sure we went through the compliance piece first and foremost. If I go back to the homepage of Jelena's site, so um, another thing you're noticing is I get this pop-up of um, choosing an option um, about contacting Jelena directly. So I can show you when I'm in Tanya's page where to set that up so that anytime somebody visits your page, they get that automatic pop-up. Having those calls to action are actually pretty helpful. Um, the, I like how Jelena has it set up that is asking common questions. So these are probably some of the most common questions she's getting as a real estate agent um, and just kind of giving people ideas on what they can contact you about. Mary? So I'll show you where to do. Yes. Are you, are you going to show us how, do we have to set up the pop-up page hey, so pop-up thing? It's, yes, and I will show you where to do that, or show you how to do that. Okay. Yes, absolutely. Um, the one last thing I want to show you on Delana's page specifically that I complimented her on this morning is that she has a really nice variety of content. Um, and once again, this is something I, I will go a little bit deeper into um, in a few minutes, but as I'm scrolling through here, her first three pages, I think, are all completely different types of content. So she has um, a sold listing, which is awesome. You should absolutely be marketing your listings, whether you sold them, whether they're new to market, whether you have an open house. Um, I also like that Jelena has a template that she's using. Um, as you start to post more and more, if you're using similar um, templates, similar branding, people start to recognize that a little bit more. And having that consistent branding is really great for just having um, easier recognition throughout your timeline. The next thing, she has an Easter post. I always say holidays are one of the easiest things you can post about. Um, you have your big ones, like your Easter, your Christmas, but then there's also tons and tons of kind of quirkier holidays, like National Pizza Day or National, I think last Saturday was Husband Appreciation Day, cute little things like that, um, that I think it may have actually been Jelena that posted about that as well. Um, but just those fun little holidays, super easy to make graphics for. Next um, is actually a co-branded graphic um, that I sent her with Tanya's branding as well. So if you've noticed, um, I post some of these in the group quite a bit or I'll send them out in emails. Um, it's really about making your lives easier when it comes to content since that is probably the biggest question I ever get. Um, and we truly have such a wide variety, anything from helpful mortgage topics to maybe I would call that a little bit fluffier content. Um, so just keep an eye out for those in the group or reach out to me directly if you're looking for content. It's really nice that um, through Tanya we have access to a lot of that. Pretty, pretty cool stuff. So um, next she has a market update. Market updates are awesome. Um, through Command Designs, you have tons and tons of graphics that you can use where all you got to do is go in there and maybe swap out a couple numbers. Um, these are awesome. You guys have so much more access to in-depth information, and you also know how to interpret it, which is, I think, the most important part when it comes to um, providing any sort of market snapshot. So I love that. Sold sign with her client helpful articles. So like I said, I love, as I'm scrolling through here, I'm seeing tons of different types of content. Um, hopefully I'm not embarrassing Jelena too much, but I just thought it was a really, really great example. And then one thing I'm not sure if you've seen that she does um, is that she was doing this winning Wednesday where every single Wednesday she was posting a listing. People would guess without knowing all the details, like how much it costs, and she's getting a lot of commentary. The more comments, the more interaction you get on posts, the farther out it gets pushed, which is why, um, you know, prompting people to comment for something, super, super helpful. So that's all I want to point out about Jelena's page. 
Um, I think it's a really, really good one to look at if you're looking for ideas on different types of content to post, how to organize your page, et cetera. Um, before I continue, any questions from anybody on the call? Cool. So now that I've shown you what it looks like kind of from a live customer perspective, I'm going to pop into Tanya's page. Um, I'm actually an admin of her page, meaning I didn't create it, but I have access to it, um, which is pretty cool. And so from this end, you'll actually be able to see how to edit certain things, what other types of things you can include, et cetera. So just from this main page, there's a couple different things I want to point out. The first being right under this cover photo is this blue call to action button. So this is something that you all have when you create a page, um, and it's editable based on kind of your preferred method of contact, um, what goal you're trying to create or trying to promote. Um, so if I hover over this and I edit it, I'm seeing a ton of different options. So this is a newer one. Um, people can now book appointments with you directly through Facebook. Um, so that's what we have set up right now. They can also contact you. Um, via email, via call, via instant messenger, things like that. Um, so just whatever kind of your main form of communication is, I would say that's what you should put for that blue button. So making sure you know about that call to action button. Um, over here on the right, if I scroll down a little bit, um, I want to look at and focus on this community button. So the reason this is important, not only are you seeing who follows your page already, but this is also where you can go to invite more people to like your page. So if I click that invite friends button, the nice thing about this is, um, especially if you've recently created a page or you haven't re-invited people or ever invited people, um, I could just select all and send these invitations to everybody I'm friends with on Facebook. What you want to note, and what to give you a little kind of sigh of relief, um, you can send these invites multiple times, um, but it's not going to resend them if somebody's already been invited. So the reason that's beneficial is as you're making more and more friends on Facebook, you're obviously going to want to invite them to the page, but you can't really keep track of who you friended in the past 30 days, you know? So you can select everybody, but it's not going to include everybody that's already liked it. So um, I saw Nick on the call. Thanks for liking the page, Nick. <laughs> um, so that's just something to note. Um, once somebody has received an invitation, they will get every once in a while like a, hey, just a reminder, you should like this page. Um, but it's not very incessant. It's not going to be totally annoying. And I know I've had people come to me a little hesitant about sending it out to everybody. Don't be. If they like it, that's awesome. If they don't, not the end of the world. But um, just want to make sure you know that that's an option. Um, if you're building a page from scratch, like you've never sent out invites to people, what I generally recommend is making sure that you have at least like three to five posts already on the page before you invite people. That's just so when they get that invite, they're going to go look at what's on the page. If there's nothing on there, they might be a little confused or a little less likely to like it. So just something to be aware of there. Um, when it comes to posting, you have a couple different options. So you can post right through here, and I'm going to be honest, I almost never use this. I am a huge proponent of post scheduling. Um, if I try to like live post every single thing we talked about, I would lose my mind. I'd be on Facebook 24-7. So scheduling is honestly your best friend, um, and there's tons of different, I guess, methods you can use for that. So um, Tanya and I use a tool, tool called Hootsuite. Um, we do pay for it, but um, it offers us just a few more kind of scheduling options, especially when it comes to things like LinkedIn, Instagram. Um, you can also schedule through command, which is really nice if you have your business page hooked up to command. Um, you can also schedule to Twitter through command. So if you have a Twitter and a Facebook, that's super helpful. And then you can also schedule directly through Facebook, but it's actually in a new spot. So you can no longer schedule from right here. You actually have to go up to the, the top bar and go to publishing tools. And once you're in publishing tools, you can, for one, see recent posts and their performance and things like that. Um, or you can go to scheduled posts and start scheduling. 
Another important thing to note about why publishing tools is nice is if I create a post in publishing tools, I have a few more post options. What I mean by that is when I'm writing a post, I can do things like a watch party, advertising my business, supporting a nonprofit, or my personal favorite, a poll. Um, so you're just able to do kind of a few more fun things um, here versus when you're posting directly on your page. Um, why I say polls are one of my favorites, um, when I was looking at Jelena's page and we were talking about that Winning Wednesday, um, having those calls to action and having a prompt for people to answer a question, it's crazy how beneficial that is when it comes to actually getting more engagement, more interaction. Polls, it's, that's exactly what it is. You're prompting people to answer a question. All they have to do is one click. You can use fun little moving GIFs on literally anything and everything. Um, so if you haven't done a poll yet, I highly recommend it. You can do it on literally anything. So whether it's like comparing um, bright, bold front door colors to neutral door colors, or maybe about a holiday, like we did one for National Girl Scout Day, asking people to choose between Samoas and Thin Men's. And it's so interesting because those posts we see it, we see it firsthand how well those perform. So quick little challenge for you, if you haven't done a poll yet, either do one today, schedule one out, super, super fun. Mary, uh, can you, yes. Mary, can you show how you got to that again? I'm sorry, I know. Yes, oh no, you don't be sorry, absolutely. So if I am just at the very beginning of my business page and I look at the top bar here, for okay. some people, you'll see it automatically in here because we have kind of a lot happening with our page. Um, if I click more, it's under publishing tools. Okay. So and publishing then tools. Okay. Yep. So then I go publishing tools. And then I can either look at publish posts and create a new publish post, or over here on the left, I can also schedule a post. Okay. Does that and make sense? And then where is the, the, the polling one is what kind of threw me? Yep. Yep. So if I'm in publish posts and I decide to create a new post, in here, if I click these three little dots, okay. I can now choose from a lot more options, including Thank you. a poll. That's the, the dots is what I missed. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no worries. Um, another thing when it comes to posting, and um, if you've ever been in maybe like an introductory class with me or any sort of Facebook class, I recommend having that separate business page compared to just a personal profile, um, mostly so that you do have a separate spot for um, most of your business content compared to your personal content, um, and also just for, for compliance purposes. Um, but something that's really nice, and if you want to make sure you're kind of keeping some of that real estate information in front of the people you're friends with on Facebook is sharing a post. So for example, um, Tanya did a video with Nina um, talking about the real estate market. I think Terry, you've done, yep. you did one of those with her this week. Yeah, yep. so she loved doing these, um, any sort of video. I can already tell this is probably gonna be your top performing post. Um, honestly, I would say probably for the week. Um, but so knowing that I may wanna share this, to my personal page and just kind of push that out in front of people a little bit more. To do that, it's kind of quirky. And I know like if I haven't done it in a while, it sometimes kind of trips me up and takes me a little bit longer. Um, so to do that, to share it to a personal page, what you do is at the bottom of any post, you wanna make sure the first thing you do is click on the teeny tiny image of yourself and make sure it's selected as your personal profile. It's not gonna work unless you do that very first step. The next thing you're gonna do is click the share button and you have quite a few options here. So you could send it as a message. You could share it to your Facebook story. Um, you can share it to a different page, share it to somebody's timeline. But right now, all I wanna do is share it to my personal page. So I'm gonna click share dot, dot, dot. And now up here in the top left, I just want to make sure it's sharing to my timeline. So um, if you're looking at this, not letting me scroll on it. Um, oh, there we go. Um, so any caption that you had with the original post will show up on there. So you don't have to do the exact same caption up here as well. 
Um, the other nice thing is that when something like this posts, people are getting a direct link to your business page. So if they haven't liked it yet, they're going to see a like this page button, meaning you're not only sharing valuable content, but you're sharing sort of a reminder to people to like your business page. And then it's also just going to help with getting more engagement um, because you're not only getting engagement from people that like your page, but then also um, all the friends that you have on Facebook. I wouldn't recommend sharing um, every single post on your business page because that is sort of the purpose of having those separate profiles. Um, but I do think it is um, helpful to just have those reminders on your personal page. Make sure people are reminded that you have it. Any questions on that? Yeah, Mary, I got a question for you on this. Does that yeah. also go through Messenger? So if you're on your cell phone, right, and you're looking scrolling through, mm -hmm. you're scrolling through your feed, will this directly yep. go through, because this is almost like a Messenger message that you're putting into your site, will this be like a, will this go through Messenger at that point in time or not? So if you post it, oops. <laughs> So if you um, share it as a message, yes. So if I click on that, I can actually send it directly as a message to as many people as I want. But if I share it to my page, it's just sharing to my personal page. They're two totally separate things. Right, but if you're on your phone is what I'm saying. If you're, if you're on your if phone. If you're on your phone, it's, the total, it's totally the same. So there's still two separate things. It'll give you the option of share, sending it as a message or sharing to your uh, personal page. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I have a question. Um, so that, yes. Okay, so when I've been posting previously, uh, like a month ago, when I would be on my business page and post the page, it would give me an option to say posting as the Steinbach Home Selling Team or post as myself. It doesn't give me that option anymore. So when I'm posting on the business page, it is coming up saying published by Amy Schleter as opposed to published by the Steinbach Home Selling Team. Oh, do you mean, so like if I'm looking at this post right here? Yes, yeah. So that, nobody else sees that. So you oh. don't have to worry. Yeah, no, I, <laughs> it gives me, it, when I first noticed that, it kind of freaked me out a little bit because that's what happens like you're an admin of that of that page so you can see if I keep scrolling here um, so published by Mary Kaczynski versus published by Tanya Sample versus published by Hootsuite okay. the only people that'll see that are admins of the page okay perfect yeah so no worries <laughs> okay thank you but I, I I agree it gave me a little bit of a fright when I first saw it but that's just um, that's one of those nice things um, so that it's mainly an organization aspect if you have multiple people on a page just to figure out kind of where those sources are coming from. Okay, perfect. Thank you. With that being, yeah, and with that being said, that actually is a perfect transition into um, advanced settings. So if I go into settings, which is in the top right, there's a couple different simple things I want to touch on right here. So the first thing being, if I go like, a third of the way down page role. So um, a lot of you may be either on a team, maybe will join a team or build a team. Um, chances are you may end up um, having somebody help be an admin of your page or you're going to be an admin of a page. So if I go to this page role, you can assign a new page role here by entering somebody's name or email. And now I can see down here, I am an admin of Tanya's page. So if you are ever thinking, or, or I know even people who have made their children, like their teenager is an admin of their page just so that they can help with some of that posting. So if you ever want to add somebody as an admin, um, as an admin, that means they can post, they can send messages, they can essentially do anything that you do as the owner of the page. And it's just as a way to kind of make your life easier a little bit. Um, so that's just where you can do that. If Either you need to be added to a page or if you want to ask me. Yes, Terry. <laughs> um, with the different roles, I'm, I'm just seeing like there's um, editor, admin, moderator, advertiser, analyst. Is there kind of a listing as far as what those specific people are able to do? Is there parameters under around each one? Yes, exactly. Yep. 
So I would say um, when it comes to some of those other ones, so like um, editor versus like advertiser versus analyst, those are more likely if you're like a big business okay. running a page. For our situation, I would say um, admin, you're always going to be able to do pretty okay. much anything they need to do as an admin should be good. But yeah, some of those are for like, we're talking like big store, big business kind of pages. Okay, so we can wait about six months to ask you about that one, right? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, the next thing I want to touch on is messaging. So Terry, answering your other question from before, um, and with how you saw Jelena's pop up. So a couple of different things you want to make note of is first things first, I went to just the messaging tab. And if I scroll down, it's the starting a messenger conversation. So this is part one showing someone a greeting before they actually send your page a message. So you wanna make sure that's turned on. You can also change like the introductory kind of messaging that you see. Um, so that's what's right here. It's showing my name um, because I'm currently in this like editing it, but this would show the name of the recipient, the person that's visiting your page. The next thing you wanna do is um, set up automated responses. So that's done here. So if I click set up, so as you saw on Jelena's page, she had um, kind of like common questions listed. So you can organize this a few different ways. So you can have, first of all, instant reply, which is just saying like, um, like Tanya, thank you for your message. I'll get back to you shortly. So that's basically anytime somebody met, actually goes ahead and messages you, they're getting some sort of response back um, just to make sure that, you know, their message isn't going completely unread for too long. Um, so that's an instant reply. Then it's questions for potential customers. So you can come in here, um, or actually it's frequently asked questions, I'm sorry. So if you go into frequently asked questions, you can edit this, create your own frequently asked questions. So maybe as a real estate agent there, um, are you looking to purchase a home? Are you looking to sell a home? Are you interested in learning more about this, this, or this? Um, so it's just common questions that you receive that can give somebody an idea of maybe what they can contact you about. So play around with this, Finagle. It's kind of temperamental, so um, I've noticed sometimes I'll go to somebody's page and I know they have it set up and it's doesn't pop up like that happened once when I went to Jelena's page earlier um, or like one of my loan officers pages. Don't panic. Um, it should be working, but it's, all, it's always worth having somebody that's not an admin of your page go visit it just to make sure that's working correctly. Cool? That is very cool. I go, that's... Pretty cool. And, and it's just nice because those, those prompts for a call to action um, the last thing in the settings that I want to touch on quickly is the templates and the tabs. So when you build a business page, um, it's kind of just like a standard template um, with tons and tons and tons of tabs. So this is something that I'm actually noticing for Tanya's that we should actually be aware of is right now these are all the tabs she has that when somebody goes to her page, they can click on, they can interact with. Um, for example, shopping probably isn't a relevant one for her because we're not selling any, like a physical, like a lamp or something. We're not selling people a bunch of lamps that they're going to go in there, click on a link, buy a lamp. So for us, maybe that one's not necessarily relevant. So for that, if I go in there, all I have to do is toggle this button off and save it, and that tab will no longer show up on my page. So if you haven't gone in and edited to make sure all of the tabs are relevant for your page specifically, I would pop in there and just make sure um, it's showing everything you want in the order that you want it. Um, when you first build a page, something I've noticed as well is this about section is like way at the bottom. I think that should be at the very top, um, making sure it's easy for people to find your contact information, your bio, what have you. So if I want to rearrange, all I have to do is grab it finagle it around, move it wherever I want. Um, not all of these are deletable. So like I noticed fundraisers isn't deletable, not a big deal. If I decide to throw one, great, I have that tab available. So I just recommend popping in there and making sure you kind of clean those tabs up a little bit so that it's 
only the information relevant to you. Cool? Great. Um, the next thing, so I'm going to go back to my main page, and there's a bunch of other tabs in there. Um, I'm not going to dive too deep into those specifically just because I want to kind of touch on, like, the most important things. Um, but if I'm back at this main page, a couple other things I want to note. So I showed you Jelena's About section. Now I want to show it to you from the perspective of um, how I can edit this. So this is exactly what yours will look like as well. Um, obviously, yours is just going to have different info in it. Um, so looking at this as a whole, I can already tell it looks a little bit different than when I'm looking at it as a consumer. If you need to edit this page, an easy way is just clicking Edit Page Info, and it's going to walk you through every single aspect of that page that needs to be filled out. So I can scroll through here. I can add more information. Um, I can add my contact info. Or you can pop into each of these tabs and edit every aspect specifically. Um, a couple things I want to touch on, though, um, so page name. For example, um, maybe if you didn't know that you're supposed to have your brokerage name in there um, and you need to edit that now, what you can do is pop into your About section and under General, you can edit that page name. So if I click on that, say I accidentally put Tanya's NMLS number wrong and I had to go in there and edit it. I could update that. Um, all you have to do, edit it, click continue, you're good to go. But an important point to note, you can only edit the page name, like I want to say up to three times. So be very careful. Make sure you're like reading it before you continue and you save it. Um, the reason that's become, I would say, where I've seen that be an issue is um, for any agents that have transferred from another brokerage um, and they wanted to keep their page, but they wanted to update the name. So um, that's just something to keep in mind. So don't go changing it every other day just because they, there is a cap on that and I don't want anybody losing their page followers or anything like that. Right under that is a username. So it's not going to come up with one for you. That's something you have to do manually. So you can edit that. The reason that's important is that's what shows up in the URL when somebody searches your page. So if I was just a regular consumer, I would be on facebook.com slash Tanya Mortgages for you. So like if you're sharing that link with somebody, that's what they'll see is facebook.com slash Tanya Mortgages for you. So in your situation, it could be your name realtor, your name Keller Williams. It can be anything you want. There's not any specific parameter there. Um, but you just want to make sure you have that so that it's not like some kind of generic uh, name up here in the URL. So that's the username. If I keep scrolling through here, um, like I said, you can have contact info. You can also have links to some of your other social medias. Um, under more info, so you need to add that license in Minnesota spiel. Um, if I hover over this, I can click edit, go in there, update that information as well. So just making sure you have that in there. And then the last thing in the about section is you'll notice here on the right, it's called a story. That's kind of their fancy schmancy way of saying bio. Um, if you haven't done this yet, I highly recommend it just because it's giving you a very specific place to talk more about not just yourself as a realtor, but yourself as a person. Um, I think that's one of the biggest things that um, it's a, it, at least it's good to be aware of when it comes to a business page that it shouldn't be all business all the time. People aren't going there just to kind of get real estate information, but they're also looking for um, information about you as a person. Um, mortgage, very similar to real estate in the sense that it's a very populated industry. So people are wanting to not only get to know Tanya as a loan officer, but her personality. And you can see her personality absolutely come through in her page, in her story, et cetera. So just take advantage of the fact that you have a designated place to do that. Um, talk a little bit about yourself. If I click see more here, I can add more information. You can have links in there. You can add a cover photo. So it just offers you an extra place to add a little bit more personality to your page. Cool? And then I'm also, once I have a story and I'm on my homepage, I'll actually see that show up on the right-hand side, which is really, really nice. 
Um, another thing that if you're not already doing this, absolutely prop people to review you. Um, so that's one of the really nice aspects of Facebook. We actually, on our end, don't push people to review us on Facebook um, as much as we used to because our company has something called Social Survey, which um, if you guys aren't familiar with it, I know Keller Williams is actually in talks with Social Survey about possibly getting that ingrained in command, which fingers crossed, you guys, because it is awesome. It is amazing. It's basically an automatic tool that prompts people to review you after a transaction. Um, but until you guys have something like that, 100% after a transaction closes, you're confident that it went well, all you have to do um, if somebody doesn't do it automatically, just send this exact link. So if you're in your business page, copy this link, send it in an email, make it as easy as possible for somebody to come here and add their feedback. Um, mo and here, honestly, I think it's just a thing of um, people not necessarily thinking to do it, not because they don't want to do it. So if you make it easy for them by just giving them the link to your business page, they're so likely to go in there, give you a positive review, and, it, and you can see that when um, somebody goes to your page. So uh, just something to keep in mind if you haven't been doing that already. Super, super nice, helpful. Um, a couple other things, and I know this is a lot to take in, um, so I guess kind of just like a quick little thing I wanted, like a spiel I want to give is, I know this can seem overwhelming because there's a lot here, um, but even just after today, if you take one or two things to start implementing or complete, um, I am always available. So, well, I shouldn't say always, but I'm, I'm here for you. So um, if you have questions on any other specific aspect of this, after today, just know you can email me, um, you can call me, you can do whatever you got to do. I'm happy to answer those questions. So I just wanted to kind of take a quick pause, let you know about that because this kind of thing is keeping me sane, you guys. Seeing other people's faces, talking to other people, I love it. Um, so just a couple other big things I want to note. Um, Facebook Live, so if you haven't taken advantage of that yet, um, I know video isn't the most comfortable thing for everybody, um, but it is super, super helpful, especially given, you know, times like these where um, I think we're all missing that human contact a little bit. Um, and so having kind of your face in front of people, um, oh gosh, this is going to actually make me start doing it. It's right. Um, so some, why I want to point this out, though, is that now with Facebook Live, you can um, have those videos in one place. You can also start um, setting up live streams where you announce to people like, hey, I'm going to be doing a Facebook Live. Um, so that's a new thing. Um, where did that go? Ah. Okay, so this is a whole more kind of complicated aspect um, than it used to be. But you can, like I said, you can now schedule a live video. So either going live now or up in the top left, scheduling a live video. Um, so for example, I've seen some agents do like a Facebook Live at open house. So you let people know you're going to be doing this Facebook Live open house. Um, they're able to attend, ask you questions as you're walking through there, um, just kind of adding to the whole virtual home buying process, home selling process, um, letting you know your letting your clients know that that is an option. So I think that's a pretty cool feature. And if your hesitation is the fact that it's a live video, I would say um, I know for us the videos that perform the best are where it's Tanya doing a Facebook Live. Like she's holding the camera, she is talking to people, she's interacting, and they see that it's her. Nobody's expecting you to be sitting in a studio right now. We're all at home, we're all wearing sweatpants, I mean, you might dress up a little bit more for your video, but um, people want to see you, and it doesn't necessarily matter as much, like, how perfect you look, but more so that you're being real, they're seeing your personality, and providing the information that you want to, so wanted you to know that that is an option, and I've seen it firsthand, I've seen people doing it, so if you do have want to schedule one of those, I think that could be fun, and then kind of on that similar note, you can also schedule events. So I've seen people schedule events for open houses. Um, I, I don't know if Megan's on the call, but she's one of the specific ones I've seen do that. Um, 
And the nice thing about scheduling an event, whether it's for an open house or a first-time home buyer seminar or um, maybe one of the office events that you have coming up, it's just a really, really nice way of having another location where you can give a ton of details, um, help people, like if there's a sign-up form, um, you can have it linked to like Eventbrite, something like that. Um, and it's just another thing you can post about, another place you can post. Um, and I will say when it comes to Facebook events, I do see these get pushed out pretty far um, just because you're seeing them in more spots. Not only are you seeing them on a business page, a personal page, but you're also seeing them in the event section of Facebook. Um, when I see like, or if you've ever noticed this, maybe a friend liked an event or is interested in an event that's coming up, that gets usually pushed out a lot farther than um, some of the other posts I see. So don't be afraid of creating an event on Facebook for something that you have coming up as well. Okay, so on the past couple of things, any questions on those? So Mary, this afternoon I was listening to um, on the pivot for mm -hmm. the book stuff and they had yep. on there for us doing open houses and stuff and how to create leads, right? Mm -hmm. And they were using like Facebook and Vimeo and stuff of that nature. And they were talking mm -hmm. about, you're, you should be able to set up um, to generate leads through this by, by doing like a lead page or whatever. Is that possible with, with the videos? So yes. Um, not a live video, but what you could do there um, is create a Facebook ad through command, either um, with a video you've already created, so that's not a live video, it's when you film separately, you've already done it, or you could do a Facebook ad advertising the live open house that you're going to do. You can kind of take it one of two ways. You can do a pre-recorded video, have that be the advertisement itself and lead people to maybe where you have it hosted, whether it's YouTube, whether it's on your website. Um, or like I said, if you're planning on doing a live video um, where they can go to like getting more information about when it's scheduled, how they can access it, et cetera. Does that make sense? That makes sense. How would, how would we set that up then if we did do that through Facebook, if you wouldn't mind showing us? So an entire ad? Well, not, not, necessarily, not necessarily an ad, but um, uh, uh, like a little capture page, like a lead capture page, if we did it like on a, if we did it so, separately. So that happens through command, actually. So that's actually completely a separate okay. Okay. process. I would say I don't have time for that in this section, um, but if you want to follow up with me, that's something. Um, okay. We could definitely talk about, and it's, um, I think, I think I put a recording in the group, but I will double check. Um, but yeah, Thank I think you. that's a great idea of taking advantage of some sort of connection to video and, and putting that in the Facebook advertisement, for sure. And if you haven't looked into that yet, um, I know I've taught a class on that before. Um, I think it's a really, really awesome tool using command Facebook ads, um, and I know people have had really, really good successes with those. Um, both for lead generation, but also for overall exposure. So I think that's a pretty awesome one. Um, and then the last main thing I wanted to touch on was content. So when we were looking at Jelena's page, I kind of already started going through that. Um, but what I want to, I guess, point out is that when it comes to your page, it shouldn't be all use me as your realtor or in our case, use me as your loan consultant all the time. You want to have a mix of what kind of messages you're putting out there, including having some of the more like fun, whimsical, um, engaging posts that aren't necessarily fully real estate related, but are just kind of more so showing your personality. So that's like those holiday posts, um, maybe doing a fun poll, something like that. Um, I'll scroll through our page just to give you an idea of kind of some of the things that we do. So Tanya did her recorded video with Nina. So that's something that's been working really well. Um, we have things like the poll, so the work from home space. If you haven't voted in that yet, you should, because I'm curious. Um, 
I will admit my desk at work is usually really nice. My desk at home is my dining room table, and it has seen better days, you guys. Um, the next is, like, market information, like, very, very info-heavy graphics. Um, some of the fluffy things. Here's, oh, Terry, it's your, it's your social survey. Oh, that made me happy. Um, informational articles, um, fun articles, funny articles. Um, some of the main, I guess, websites that I use are, if you've never been on lighter side of real estate, they have some really, really funny content. I put it in, um, I've been sending out, I'm not sure if you guys have noticed, but every Friday we're sending out a weekly newsletter uh, via MailChimp. So if you haven't noticed that, take a look at your inbox every Friday. We have post ideas, graphic ideas, article ideas. And an article I posted last week I found on lighter side of real estate about like real estate as described by Tiger King. And I'm not kidding. Like I was laughing out loud as I was going through it. So stuff like that um, prompts. So ask me about buying in today's market. Um, FAQ is something kind of similar to this. So like if you're preemptively answering the frequently asked questions, so like, for example, um, do I have to have 20% down for a down payment? No, you don't need 20% down for a down payment. You're answering a question before either the, or before somebody realizes they have it um, or like for people that are already in that process, that's really great information to know. Here's the holiday post housing update, fluffy article. So it's just, the point being is it's a variety. People know it's her brand, but at the same time, it's different things that you're seeing, which is really nice. Um, if you're ever just sitting there stuck, like you just don't know what to post, know that you can always email us and we will send you something, something, whether it's a fun mortgage article, Fun and mortgage, those are two words you don't hear very often. Um, a funny article, a new graphic that we have, something informational and mortgage related. We have a full library of content that I want to make sure you guys know you have at your disposal. So um, either that, if you just want to send, send us an email, or if there's a specific topic you're looking for information on, um, we can also create custom co-branded content. So um we do that kind of thing all the time with with graphics and things like that so just make sure you know that we are here for you as resources when it comes to your social media marketing um i'll be fully honest it's not something that comes super natural for me um i but i understand the importance of it as you're staying in front of your database you're making sure you're connecting with people and i'll give i don't know if tanya's on the call but i'm going to give her mega props because she's so good at interacting with people on social media like if somebody comments she's going to comment back um doing those little things that's what social media is really all about is interacting with people engaging with people um so if you do have people commenting sharing your posts making sure you're um commenting back letting them know you acknowledge it things like that so um those are the main things that i want to talk about today like i said i know that's a lot but if you have follow-up questions I'm available, Tanya's available. Tanya's a Facebook queen. She could have easily taught this class too. She's amazing with it. So um, any questions from anybody on the call? No? Oh, Terry, yes? <laughs> Sorry, I just thought of it. Um, you know how, uh, especially on the business page, it's saying boost this post. What does that mean? Mm. And what does it cost? And does it really make a difference? Are we better to do an ad? Can you go on that a little bit more? Terry, I love, love, love that question okay. because um, it's one of those things, and I'm actually talking to somebody later today about that exact thing in that, um, so like if I'm looking at this post, for example, are, you guys can still see my screen, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Um, so like if this were the post I was boosting and I click boost post, it's going to kind of prompt me um, to say like, how far out are you trying to boost this? Who do you want to see this? How much are you willing to spend? Very similar to a Facebook ad. But what I've noticed is um, when, you, when it comes to boosting a post, it's mostly going out to like friends, friends of friends 
because if you've ever noticed, every, just because like 600 people like your Facebook page doesn't mean they're all seeing your post every time, which is so frustrating. Um, so what I've noticed, like I said, is when you're boosting a post, it goes out farther, but it's kind of more based on like connections of connections of connections, et cetera. Um, whereas advertising, you just have so much more you can do with it in regards to targeting, in regards to who's seeing it, where are they seeing it, how you can use your contacts. You can upload a group of people that you want to see your ad. Um, you can do it through command, which we've seen has super great results. So I think I call boosting kind of like the lazy man's advertising is it's quick. It's, you don't have to go through the whole ad building process. Um, but I just don't think you see the same beneficial results and you're not seeing leads from it. I would say that one's pretty much guaranteed just a little bit of extra exposure. But it still so, costs you, right? It still costs you, yes. So you could put, and honestly, sometimes I just think little tests are fun. Like you could put $10 at a boosted post and $10 at an ad and, and command and compare them. But I think, uh, what's the saying, hand over foot? I don't know, I may have made that up. Um, you're gonna see better results through Facebook advertising specifically, and even more so through Facebook advertising and command. Okay, thank you. Yes, so don't, and, and I've noticed too, like sometimes you'll get the little notification, um, this post is performing well, boost it. And so don't fall for their little tricks on trying to get you to spend money on it because it's just, there's just less uh, like personalization you can do with it, less overall that you can do with that kind of post versus full on advertising. That's good to know. Well, Mary, for, for me, I mean, I just want to say, and I'm probably, there's a lot of people who maybe feel the same way. For me, seeing you go to the different places, it's making me go, oh, duh. If I just click there and and search around, now, now I know where to go and kind of an idea of where mm -hmm. to find things. So thank you. That's huge. You're welcome. And it's, it's one of those things that I've noticed Facebook does this, which drives me nuts a little bit, but they change things a lot. So like, um, for example, you used to be able to schedule posts by um, right, like in, right in this section. And then all of a sudden they changed that. Mm. And it took me having to like search around and figure all that out to then yeah. find where to do that. So if you ever run into those issues, just know it's probably still there. They've just changed something. So feel free to reach out to me because I've probably run into the same issue, but it's a lot of it's a lot of exploring, I'll say. So on on Tanya's that homepage and, and her first thing is a a video. Is that just mm -hmm. where you have the setup and then you just put in a video instead of a picture? This one? Yep. The yep. So cover photos can be videos. So that is an option for you. Um, if you have like a really well done listing video, um, maybe I would just make sure, like I said, like you pop your branding on there somewhere. Um, and now when you say you can pop absolutely do branding, what do you, how would you just pop that? So for example, yep. So for example, Tanya's branding is in here. So, um, I didn't actually make that video. I'm guessing that that was our videographer. Um, okay. But he was able to add the branding to the end. So if you have like a professional videographer adding that branding, um, that should be no problem to him or using a video editing tool just so that you make sure you're still in compliance with the different logos. Gotcha. Oh, that reminds me. When it comes to logos, if you need them, I have um, what I call condensed logos, which is the Minnetonka office logo with the Equal Housing Opportunity and National Association of Realtor all in one. That's so that nice. you're not constantly having to add three. And they're transparent backgrounds. So if you need those, shoot me an email. I can send all of those to you. Yeah, that's great. Thank Any you. Any other? Yes, of course. Any other questions? All right, you guys. Well, thank you to everybody that actually sat in live on the class. Um, I love when people are asking questions and interacting. So that's great. Um, I know I'm probably repeating myself over and over again, but please don't hesitate to reach out if you have questions. Um, Tanya and I are both here to help. 
we're both social butterflies, so we're on the struggle bus a little bit. So we look forward to hearing from you and, and helping you guys out with all this. So um, with that being said, everyone, have a great day. I will send out the recording of this um, shortly, and I'll talk to you later.